Thank you, Gilbert. It's a pleasure to be part of your conference again. Um, we presented, I think, three years ago. So it's been it's been some time, and there have been a number of developments with the company that uh, we're very pleased to share with you today. Um, as uh, Gilbert said, we are focused on, on oncology, developing new treatments for underserved cancers or hard-to-treat cancers, and we are traded on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol RKV. It's very important to think about time when we think about cancer, because as cancer affects our families, our friends, and often ourselves, we need to be able to move quickly toward new treatments. And partnering with artificial intelligence is one way that we can do that. And at Rakabina Therapeutics, we have collaborated with two best-in-class AI algorithms to speed up and make the more the drug discovery process more efficient. We are focused on DNA damage response, which is some of the systems within your, um, your body that are designed to protect ourselves from DNA damage. That happens all the time, whether we're out in the sunlight or have experience and come in contact with toxins, there's damage happening to our cells and our DNA all, uh, DNA all the time. But we have very sophisticated systems within those cells that can detect and repair that damage. But what we know now is that roughly three out of every four cancers involves a defect in one of those systems. And that allows us to target that with a drug. And so what we've done in collaboration with the University of British Columbia is establish a collaboration to rapidly screen new drug candidates against those key targets. Our team, uh, in addition to myself, uh, is led by Mad Dalgard, who is a professor at the University of British Columbia, and he is overseeing the research in the laboratories. Professor Dalgard is an expert in DNA damage response, uh, and he's someone that I've worked with for many, many years. We're also joined by Artem Cherkasov, who is one of the originators of the concept of computer-aided drug discovery. And Professor Cherkasov at the University of British Columbia, our partner in AI, uh, is one of the leaders in the world in this field of drug discovery using artificial intelligence. We also have a wonderful scientific advisory board around us. Um, I don't have time to go through everybody's name, but one of the people that uh, I will point out is uh, Petra Hammerlich. Petra joined our scientific advisory board about a year ago. And prior to that, she was the head of the DNA damage response programs at AstraZeneca, who is the leader in the field with the largest product in the space. And having Petra's knowledge uh, around our table, the knowledge of the leader in the field and the insights that she brings is really aiding our drug discovery efforts. Why do we use AI? Well, if you think about finding the best drug candidate against a certain target as looking for a needle in a haystack. A small company like Rakavina Therapeutics originally would be handicapped a bit. Because of our resources, we can only look at a small corner of that haystack. A larger company would be able to look at much more of that haystack. So they would have an advantage in looking at and looking for uh, that next best in class drug candidate. What the AI allows us to do is very rapidly look at the entire haystack, the entire chemical space, if you will, to identify novel chemical structures that could be best in class drug candidates. We then bring those into our laboratories, validate them, and we'll look to partner with larger companies to move into human clinical trials. This takes the drug discovery process from tens of millions of dollars and many years to a matter of months. And that's what we've shown uh, in the labs and the data that we presented recently. So we have, as I said, two collaborations with, uh, with um, uh, DNA damage response focused AI platforms. One is the deep docking platform at the University of British Columbia with Professor Cherkasov. The other is a collaboration with a company called Variational AI here in Vancouver. And Professor Cherkasov is an advisor to that company. When we run these algorithms to look at and look for novel drug candidates against our targets, 
we will own the rights to everything that comes out of that, which is very important because the main assets that we are looking to develop are those drug candidates. AI is a tool to get there, get there ahead of the competition and develop a be next best in class drug candidate that is going to be beneficial for patients. How powerful are these platforms? An example of the deep docking platform and Professor Cherkasov's work can be found in what he did during COVID. In just three and a half weeks, this algorithm screened 1.3 billion drug candidates against the COVID virus. Using traditional drug discovery techniques, that would have taken about 10,000 years. 1.3 billion drug candidates were narrowed down into a short list of candidates that was published online. It was essentially Professor Cherkasov's way to say, this is a problem the world needs to solve, and this is my contribution. That short list led to multiple drug discovery programs, and we are aware that it had direct influence on Pfizer's decision to advance Paxlovid, which of course was the first therapy approved against the COVID virus less than a year later. So being able to move from a target to drug candidates to approval this rapidly is game changing. As I said, our focus is on DNA damage response. This represents three out of every four cancers. We have exclusive access to these AI platforms for drug discovery in this field. So from the time that we announced the AI collaboration last spring in 2024, we trained the AI against our first target. We screened more than 5 billion drug candidates and have received that shortlist and synthesized those drug candidates in our laboratories. We're now ranking them, sifting through that list, and identifying the best candidates to move forward. Our first target is a PARP1 selective inhibitor that will cross the drug blood-brain barrier. The first drug candidates on the market um, in DNA damage response are PARP inhibitors. There are three of them, and they will do collectively about $4 billion in sales this year. One of the challenges they have is side effects. And another challenge they have is the lack to cross the blood-brain barrier and treat a tumor that has spread to the brain. That is what we are looking for. We have trained the AI to, to find candidates with that profile. And we screened more than 5 billion candidates and are developing that shortlist now. A second target um, is ATR. Um, and we're doing the same thing essentially there. So our portfolio is evolving to look like this. KT3283 is a molecule that we developed prior to our um, collaborations with an artificial intelligence, and that is being formulated with collaborators to move toward clinical trials. The KT2000 series and KT5000 series are the result of multi-billion screen uh, drug candidates that are being optimized in our laboratories to move now toward clinical trials. Um, the process and the announcements that we've made um, along the way are significant. Uh, we've continued to present our progress at leading scientific meetings, uh, and most recently here at the Bioconference in the United States, uh, as well as the American Association of Cancer Research annual meeting um, in, uh, in April. What does this field look like and what is our commercialization strategy? Our goal is to partner these drug candidates early in the process preclinically before we get to the, the stage where we have to spend significant dollars on clinical trials. We will do that with a partner and the partners will pay very significant upfront fees and significant deals even in a preclinical stage. And we've seen multiple examples of this in the past couple of years in the DNA damage response field where the upfront fees on the order of $100 million or more and a deal value of billions. And that is for preclinical drug candidates. And that is our goal for commercialization. We recently completed an oversubscribed uh, financing of $4.9 million. Uh, gives us cash runway to continue to hit our milestones. Uh, we also recently announced a share consolidation. So the currently shares outstanding uh, is about 22 million. So in summary, we're looking at a market that represents three out of every four cancers. $18 billion in potential.
We're leveraging real world proven artificial intelligence platforms to accelerate drug discovery, level the playing field with competition, and get ahead of them, in fact, to discover those best in class candidates. This is a successful model that was employed during COVID and has resulted in multiple drugs in clinical trials. We've got a management team that's done this before and uh, in an integrated um, uh, program in the laboratory. At this point, I'd be happy to open it up for questions. And I've got a number in the chat here as well. Hi, uh, Jeff. Uh, a few questions here. The first one from uh, Sandy. As a how will your recent finance being be, financing be used to support your research and development? Yes, of course. the The majority of the of the um, uh, capital that was raised uh, is going into um, the validation of the PARP one program, the KT two thousand program, as well as the KT five thousand program, which is the ATR program. We presented data at both of those on both of those uh, programs at the AACR meeting recently, uh, and we're looking to advance those toward final lead selection with the, the capital that we have. Okay, and uh, this one from Isaac, do you have any plans to assess or go public in U.S. markets in the future? Um, of course, that is uh, always something that we have our eyes on. Um, as we advance and validate this platform, and in particular through partnerships with pharma, we believe that uh, recommended therapeutics will evolve to be become an, uh, a very attractive institutional in, uh, investor target, uh, which would drive us toward, toward a U.S. listing. Great. Uh, this one from Suki is asking, uh, do you have any... Uh, uh, a potential uh, a partnership or discussion with any uh, major pharmaceutical company or multinational companies? Uh, yes, um, of course, we have been having some conversations along the way. Um, when we announced the the, the uh, sort of strategic transition to using AI in our drug discovery efforts, uh, we did that in a very directed way. Uh, it was about a year ago, right ahead of the major partnering meeting at the American Association of Cancer Research annual meeting. And that gave us an opportunity to have that to talk about uh, in front of the big pharma companies saying, we know what you're looking for. We can deliver it and we should be getting to know each other and starting those conversations early. I'm not at liberty to say where those conversations are and with who, but uh, I would expect to see some uh, uh, progress announcements uh, toward a deal in the not too distant future. I uh, and come come question from Michelle. Can you tell, tell us more about uh Leopard about what more of your scientific team and what sets us apart in the AI and cancer drug discovery field? Yeah, well we we have a sort of a a a strong collaboration between the AI and the wet lab. You know, the star of the show here at Rackabita Therapeutics is never going to be AI. It's always going to be the product candidates. That's what's going to make a difference for patients, and that's what's going to build value for shareholders. So we're blessed to have Art Cherkasov and his team, who are originators of and leaders in the field of computer-aided and AI-driven drug discovery. And that is matched by Mads Dalgard and the team in the laboratory, who's then responsible for taking the output of the AI working with medicinal chemists to synthesize those molecules, bring them into the lab for validation. So we have an infrastructure at the University of British Columbia that allows us to do all of the cell-based work, the in vitro work, the in vivo animal studies, even toxicology and into clinical trials. So this is a, a wonderful uh, partnership between AI-driven chemistry and validation and proof of concept uh, in the wet lab at UBC. Okay, one last question is that uh, if we're investing into your company now, what sort of catalysts or uh, what kind of things are we looking for in the next 12, 18 months? Um, I, in the next little while, um, I would expect to see collaborations ar announced around uh, KT3283, the original molecule that we are in discussions with uh, formulation partners to advance to clinical trials. I'd also expect to see announcements at major scientific meetings about progress uh, in the KT2000 and KT5000 series, the AI-driven drug discovery collaborations, uh, drug discovery programs, um, ultimately leading to a partnership announcement uh, that would be significant. Mm -hmm.